We're here with Father Jim Plafkin, who is the custodian of the shrine here. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing to walk on this holy ground. I have had such a sense since we started to tape the lives of the saints, of the martyrs of North America. At first, I was deep into the pain, the suffering, the price that was paid. Being a mother and a grandmother, all I could see was the pain these young men endured. All we have seen is the violence and the atrocities, but we never did see the fruits of that. Then we come just a short distance and we meet the lily of the Mohawks, the fruit of the evangelization of the Jesuits here in the United States and in Canada, blessed Kateri Tekakwitha. So we see that although the Jesuits left here in 1649 completely depressed, thinking that it had been a failure, the fruits even then were beginning to, to blossom. And she, so like our early martyrs, right, Father? Mm -hmm. uh, well, she was in love with Jesus. She was solely giving, it, it would seem, Father's going to tell us about it, but it would seem that she was giving her life totally to our Lord and wanted no one else. And so she rather give up her life than enter into a relationship, even marriage. The life of Kateri I, I find personally fascinating because like St. Francis when she chose to follow Christ in a very short time, became totally conformed in many ways to her, his life, the life of Christ. Growing up among the Mohawk people, among the Iroquois Confederacy, which is five Indian nations that banded together throughout New York State, the Mohawks were known as being the most violent in many ways. There was always struggle between the tribes, with sometimes neighboring tribes attacking the Iroquois to gain territory, and at other times, the Iroquois initiating the attack. They were merciless against their captives. When their neighbors were brought back to camp, it was the women who made the decisions whether they would live as slaves or die, very often inflicting the most hideous torture upon their captives until they did die. Even the little girls inflicted the most heartless torment upon the prisoner day on end. Into this, Kateri was born in 1656 at Osananon. Her father was a Mohawk chief, part of the Iroquois. Her mother, an Algonquin woman, was a Catholic. In fact, she learned Christianity initially from her own mother, an Algonquin Indian, who, in marrying her father, who was a tribal chief, she, as she grew up, learned about the Christian faith, and eventually, as we know from the work of the missionaries, wished to learn more about her faith. But as time went on, the tribe, when they were first banded together and she was first born in this area of the Mohawk Valley. They were over at a smaller village across the way called Osernanan, now close to Orisville, the, the Jesuit shrine of the North American martyrs. In her youth, one of the reasons the whole tribe moved here was because smallpox hit the tribe and killed off more than half of their people, not just Kateri's parents and her younger brother. So that illness left her with a potted face and it affected her eyesight, so she could not stay out in bright sunlight. She mm. had to often cover her eyes because the sun bothered mm. her ability to see. Because of that, she obviously used her time well. In the longhouse, she worked on beadwork, and she tried to help around the chores of the, the family, or the, her, her longhouse family. And it's during that time, it seems that she developed a more profound interior life. And when she embraced Christ, as we know with many of the Mohawk Indians, when they make up their mind, they are committed to a cause. And Kateri rightfully did that. 